What's going down, YouTube? Ready to crack off this letter G. Gonna start off slow, drop that opacity. Let's start edging it out a little bit. Wanna get those nice dynamic edges popping. Gonna go up a little bit. I kind of like to do my G's with just one of the, the serifs coming off. Already I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this design a little bit. G's another good one, a lot of hard angles you can make with it. Just working it. Now of course, you know, you're using, uh, if you're using paper, you want to go ahead and use really light line. Alright, so we got a design that, that looks pretty nice. Just kind of erasing, just kind of trying to make it a little bit more dynamic, play with this edge a little bit. Alright, I mean, look, at it's got a lot of movement. So we're going to rock that 3D now, because I'm feeling that. Kind of going to go towards the center. Let's see how this turns out. Everything going to the center. Right in the middle of that G. So it's like coming right at you. Bam! Right at you like a speeding G. Only G's do G's as good as me's. Right. Kind of edged out that 3D a little bit on that 3D layer. Always working layers. You're not you're not stuck to one layer. Especially if you're going digital and you're using this medium. I mean, you have endless amount of stuff you can do. So like play around with it. Don't be scared to make a line. You can always get rid of it. You gotta control Z. If you ain't feeling it, control Z it. Right, now I'm going back to my outline layer. I'm gonna add that 3D in there with the hard black, your black line. Now th there's a bunch of different brushes you can use. I try to stay with the one that's a soft tip and the one with the hard tip. I don't usually use the so softer brushes until like I'm doing my uh, my color and my fading and stuff like that. Then I lower the opacity and I kind of play around with, you know, fading that, that pen out over the top of another layer that kind of gives it that blend. All right, right now I'm just bolding up that outline. My videos that I do on paper, I like to give the final product that nice, bold black outline. Usually I follow it by a lighter highlight. It just really makes that pop. I usually use that, that jelly pin, that white jelly pin. All right, now I'm just opening up like, uh, I'm going to my swatches and I'm just kind of going down the list. Um, I'm gonna go with like neons and uh, pastel type palette. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of these colors. Now, w when I get my swatches like this, I kinda, you know, I pick the swatches that I wanna use and uh, I'll just put them up on the top layer. You'll see, uh, well, not the layer, but the swatch layer. If you hit the colors that you like, they pop up on the top bar. Now I know kind of the colors that I wanna work with, but then I'll switch back and then I'll use the color picker to kind of vary around that color with different hues and stuff. You know, it's almost like uh, messing around with the temperature or the saturation without actually going in and changing those settings. I'm just playing around with the, the color scale actually. All right, so I'm gonna give it kind of like this, you know, stained glass window feel like those church cathedrals. You know, it's pretty easy. I'm just drawing sharp lines across the whole letter until uh, I feel like I have good shapes in there. Once I have the good shapes in there, I'm gonna lower that opacity a little bit. I'm gonna keep that layer above my color layer though, because I wanna hit this with a bunch of different colors, but I wanna see where those lines still are. So because I wanna see those lines, I'm keeping that above the color layer for now so I can kind of follow that. It'd be the same as if you're you know, you're leaving your light pencil strokes on the paper and you're just going in and filling it in. I mean, by the time you get all the color, you're not going to see those lines really anyways. So I'm just bouncing around this pink and this turquoise right now, but it's like very, very bright. These colors are pretty damn bright, but I mean, you can see they, they go for sure. I'm, I'm thinking about hitting it with like some greens and maybe a yellow just really bright colors all clashing together and then uh, 
I'm thinking when I'm done with that, I might hit it with like a a dark purple or a, a maroon or something like that. Yeah, so I'm just playing around, looking at these colors, seeing if they work. I'm feeling that too. If this G had legs and was walking around, you'd be like, what the hell is going on here? You are too damn bright this late in the afternoon. You're hurting my eyes, G. Hitting it with this pastel, this little violet. Very light, actually. It's more probably like some lavender. Alright. Just kind of playing. Ooh. That's a little bright. Kind of overwhelm that, the rest of the colors. I gotta stay more on that pastel y color look. Just use different. Okay, that's more violet right there, but it works far enough away from that other color that it's not like. It's not blending in, really. That blue's super clean. Now, see, you can see my line still, and that's, that's again, because I have that layer above the color layer. It's probably at about a 30 opacity, um, just enough so that I can see it. And, and that's the beauty of doing layers, is because you can go in and out of the layers. You can change opacities. I mean, you could change that all the way down to, you know, zero and see nothing and then have it all the way bold. You could just play around with that. And because it's on its own layer and you're not interfering, that's one thing. When you start kind of getting used to the layer system, you got to make sure that you don't get so much in the zone that all of a sudden you're doing something else in that same layer that you thought was on another one and then you kind of screwed yourself a little bit there. All right, see, I took out the lines and now, you know, no lines are there. It's just super clean. Look how clean that looks. The layers are your friends. I mean, it takes a lot of time off of your process when you're messing around and you're doing and you're doing different layers. It just it just does. It helps you I mean, just like your phone, just like your computer, just like anything else, if you're using technology, it's meant to make things faster, that's for sure. And if it's not making it faster for you, I mean, obviously you could spend hours and hours and hours and days on days just doing some digital stuff, but it's gonna make it faster for sure. Less error prone too. Cause you can control Z. Just putting that dark purpley background that I talked about. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking how, how should I go about this? Cause I want that G to pop off. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a, a highlight layer. So I did one solid layer of that purple. I took dark, I took the same purple, just went to a darker hue of it and then started blending with that soft brush all the way up. I took the lights from that same purple and I went from the top down. So now it's starting to kind of pop off that. You can feel it. I mean, that's looking nice already. Now some say you'd call it a day, but no, 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 no. You gotta play around with the outline. So now I'm hitting it with that nice, it's, it's like a pink, nice bright pink border around there, that highlight. Now it's really starting to pop off that screen, pop off those dark colors in the back. If you see some flickering, I don't know, we're trying to fix that. Okay, I'm not really feeling that. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Those little pink flames coming up. It's a little much. We'll just hit it with the nice clean drips, just a couple of them. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good right there. splatters there we go I think that's good I mean I cannot stress enough just keep like just like I was saying on the last video just keep working with it man don't don't just stop and and, and start over try to play with it until it comes to life and you'll be very surprised what you can come up with you know, I think that 3D is missing something, so we're going to have to work that a little bit. Probably with a darker, darker range of that same color. Give the drip some highlight to them, made them pop off even a little bit more. It still feels like it's missing something. Hmm. Yeah, let's put another, put another layer on top of this uh, 3D and just kind of work that a little bit. Now it's on top of the 3D layer, but it's still below that main, 
the main G's color layer. So I don't have to be all cautious and careful as much as I would if that layer was above, because obviously I'd be erasing my black lines and stuff, which you don't want, which again is the reason why you have an advantage to play around a lot more with uh, your style because it's more forgiving than this. It's easier to make happy little accidents. All right, so we're gonna go in here and do some of the dark colors in that 3D. I think it's gonna bring forward those pastel colors a lot more. It's gonna give it a little bit more depth. From the depths. All right, yeah. Just a nice little clean fade with some bubbles in there. Yeah, I don't wanna get it too busy because the front of it's already real busy. I'm gonna do a quick little fade, but I hope you enjoyed the letter. The next one up is the letter H. We're gonna crush this alphabet real quick. You're gonna see videos dropping like flies, you know what I mean? So stay tuned. Hit me up on Twitter at Evade1. Let me see if you're rocking a little couple pieces, following along, doing the letters. I want to see what you're doing. I want to hear some comments, what you want to see done. It's all good, you know? All right, peace.